Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm making this video, well, because I promised God I would make it, but uh, it's the right thing to do. So, <clears throat> at the beginning of September, my daughter and I came down with COVID, and uh, I made a post. I got in. I got into a discussion on Facebook with numerous people over the years, the last two years about COVID, but I made a post on uh, Facebook saying, uh, go out and plant a dirt and catch the sniffles, live your life and things like that. And uh, while I was going through COVID, I made a promise with God that I would make this video and that I would share it with everybody and uh, I would just be real. So just a little preface to everything, um, you know, for the past two years, I don't buy into the COVID hype. Um, I assumed that it was just uh, a cold or it was only taking the weak people and looking back at it, I've said some pretty insensitive things and I have some friends that have lost some family members and friends and uh, you know I just took it as somebody was weak and they were uh, getting picked off by a, a bug that 99.7% of us are surviving and uh, you know over the years with politics and whatever uh, it might surprise you all to to hear this but I'm not particularly political uh i'm more of a shithead and being antagonistic um uh, like ruffling people's feathers there's certain things i believe in and there's certain things that uh i most certainly don't believe in but uh well regardless i'll just get to it um my daughter and i we uh we both came down with COVID. Cora brought it home from school. I think her highest temperature was 99.5. She had a, a nagging headache for a day and a half. And she's lost her taste of sense, like her smell and her, uh, and her, and her taste, whatever. She's, she's still a miss with all that. She's trying to get it back in order. She was never, ill i wouldn't say ill she didn't feel good for like a day and a half um she wasn't bedridden she didn't need we really didn't even need medicine outside of two days um and i'm grateful for that and i understand there's a lot of people that that's the extent or the brunt of what they get when they get covid uh I am not a doctor. I don't pretend to be a doctor. I'm not a immunologist. I'm not an infectious disease doctor. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's also a lot of scare tactics out there. Um, first thing I want to say before I get into what happened to me is uh, I full heartedly believe that there is a medical infrastructure failure across this company company across this country and by that I mean uh, in no way shape or form should hospitals be th throwing oncology beds over to people with COVID uh, on uh, oncology in itself is a sick disastrous uh, you know disease and it's taken far too many people and people are suffering in no way should hospitals be forced to give up cancer beds to people with COVID and uh Hospitals shouldn't be 95% people with COVID. Um, there's a lot of people that should be sent home and uh, and made to deal with it at home. A very small percentage of people are, are needed to be put on the ventilators. Um, when COVID first came out, I know that that was a very big deal, that there wasn't enough ventilators. Living in Southwest Florida, there are there have been field hospitals set up and I think that, you know, if we can send troops overseas and fight 20 year wars in Afghanistan and leave 
hundreds of millions of dollars worth of military equipment behind why not set up makeshift hospitals and take care of the americans that are struggling with this disease leave the hospitals open for people that need to go in that have broken legs that need surgeries that have cancer that have things other than covid um there's not a lot you can do for covid uh you can get on a respirator if you go that far other than that you got to go through the motions uh they can treat your symptoms they can give you medicine to help you feel a little bit better but you just got to go through it and that's like any virus strep uh you know what i'm saying you get strep they give you some stuff to help you feel better but the virus has to run its course there's t you know tens of millions of parents every year their kids come up with a common cold and they go running for antibiotics and and it doesn't do anything uh and any good physician any good urgent care is going to tell you these antibiotics are not going to do much for you uh go home and treat the symptoms and you got to let it run its course and your body normally will take care of it um that's not what's happening. People are scared of COVID and they get a cough, they get a headache, they get a temperature and they're running to the emergency room because they think they're gonna die. And I slammed that ideology and I still partially do, but there's no, there's not a lot of places for these folks to go. They only really have a, they only can go to the hospital. Uh, but I believe that's the failure of our medical infrastructure and we should really start thinking about, you know, spinning up, you know, some pretty good semi-permanent field hospitals to take care of things like this, to keep our hospitals open. And that'll lead me into what happened uh, to myself. Um, around the 1st of September, I started getting a nagging headache. Uh, about day four, I started to feel a little icky and I got a COVID test and it came back positive. And up to about day five, I mocked this thing. And, um, Palm Beach, if you're in Southwest Florida, you know exactly what this is all about. I, I live next to the highway, unfortunately. But, um, I mocked this disease, I mocked this virus. And, uh, let me tell you what, it's not a joke. Uh, I don't know how you can prepare for it. Um, vaccine or no vaccine, people are getting sick with this stuff and it is uh, tearing people apart. I'll let you know that around day five or six for me, I started having 104.9 temperatures. Uh, at one point in time, I had an infrared thermometer put on my chest and yes, it said 110.1, and I'm not joking, it was 110.1. I was literally, I, I was burning alive. It was absolutely, uh, it was the most miserable thing I had ever gone through in my life. Um, I sat in the shower for hours, uh, praying for this thing to pass by me, to go over me, and I told God if I got through that, I would sit out and tell everybody what I went through, and I owe that to everybody. Um, this is not a cold. This is not a flu. This is not an upper respiratory infection. Uh, this is not pneumonia. Um, I've had uh, flu, double flu pneumonia. I've had them at the same time. Took one Tamiflu pill, and my I was back to you know decent working order. Um, that might have been a really great response to the medicine, but no matter what I did with COVID, um, did I get any relief? Uh, if it were not for the fact for being a single parent and not being around many family members or if any at all, I should have been in the emergency room myself. Uh, my blood oxygen was very, very low. Uh, it got down into the to 90 percent if it got below 90 percent i made a promise to myself to go to the hospital it did not dip below 90 percent thank god um my fever 
oh goodness gracious, some of the nastiest stuff. Uh, I don't wish that upon anybody. There's a couple people in this life that I might catch a felony over if I saw them again. <laughs> I swear, but I would not give you COVID. I would not. I would not wish COVID on you uh, whatsoever. Um, the uh, aches and pains similar to the flu, the chills, the sweating, kind of similar to the flu, but just multiply it. It was so, so heavy. But being a single dad, not having anybody down here, I could not go to emergency room and possibly pass away and leave my kid sitting at the house not knowing what's going on. She couldn't have went to the hospital with me due to her age and also being uh, COVID positive. So I legitimately had to stay home and ride it out, live or die. I had to stay home. Um, I would I would not want to die alone in the hospital anyways. I, I'd rather do it at least next to somebody who loves me, my daughter. She took care of me. Um, I drank so much water. Uh, I'm surprised I'm not an amphibian. Uh, I can't tell you how many uh, 32 ounce glasses of water I put through my body every day and when I would go pee I mean we're just talking about eighth of a cup of pee my body was using every bit of that water uh, to try to regulate my temperature and keep me alive um, I honestly don't know how I'm alive I'm not I'm not uh, lying about the 110 with the infrared thermometer right on the chest I woke up and the heat, the heat was coming off me so heavy. Uh, I put the laser right there. I mean, and I can say up or down, give or take a, a degree. So it was either 111 or it was 109. So I'm just gonna call it 110. My core temperature right here was just, I was on fire. Um, and that lasted, that was about six days of 103.2, 102.8. I could not get my temperature down. But I will tell you, there were a couple of days I did get my temperature down. I broke that fever, the sweat that comes after it. Oh my gosh, you'd think that I was running a triathlon or an Ironman. Uh, whew, never sweat so much in my life. Middle of working parties in the United States Navy. My dad put me in the attic with a air hammer, uh, nailing down uh, beams in, in his new house back in 1999, uh, 100, 100 and some degrees up there in the attic, and I was sweating, nothing like me sweating with COVID, uh, not anything close. Blankets completely saturated. I, some of the craziest experiences, and this is not meant to be a scare tactic. Uh, this is my personal experience, and I know there's so many millions of other people that are going through it. Um, but about five or six days of the temperature, uh, I happen to have a really good friend, Dr. Kevin Rosenbach. He's one of the nation's leading immunologists. Uh, he specializes in this stuff. I had an ace in the back. <laughs> I had an ace up my sleeve, and I didn't really use it. And for that, Kevin... I was, I don't know, too proud. I thought that it was, I underestimated it. And uh, uh, some false narratives out there. And I had an ace up my sleeve and I sure didn't heed your warnings and how ashamed I am, but still thankful that you, uh, that you were there for me and helped, helped me get through it over the phone. And I went and got the, um, I went and got the Regeneron monoclonal antibody injections and about 30 hours after those injections were in my body in my body uh i hadn't i never had a temperature again my my body uh even keeled out uh, the temperature went away the sweats went away um but then the onset of these coughing attacks came on um my diaphragm the temperature in my core was so bad that the nerves in my diaphragm became damaged and arrhythmic. They, they were not correct. I, I could not breathe. I could not breathe in and out like a regular inhale, exhale. I could not breathe in and out. When I breathed in, it was 
<laughs> or I had to breathe super shallow. Um, my heart rate was 114 for five days steady. I couldn't get it below 110. Um, my body was really going through it. I could not imagine having the temperature, the breathing arrhythmia, and the coughing attacks simultaneously. I, I, I could not imagine it. Um, I don't know how anybody survives that. I have no idea how these survival numbers at 99.7 um, are there. This many people at home just going through the ringer or there are there this many people at home just absolutely getting obliterated laying in the hospitals getting obliterated yeah i i'm pretty sure the answer is yes but for the elderly for the children people with pre-existing condition conditions i'm a fairly healthy 40 year old guy of 220 pounds i'm not gross overweight I may be a little bit out of shape it, generically. I haven't been sick in five years. Uh, I rarely get sick. I believe the United States Navy had a little bit more than penicillin when they shoved that peanut butter shot in my butt cheek. <laughs> got the anthrax vaccine, typhoid, uh, malaria. I've got all kinds of vaccines under my belt. Um, but, uh, this stuff is no joke for anybody that chooses to go through this entire video. Uh, if you lost a loved one, just know I was never purposefully insensitive. Uh, it's sad. This is legitimate. This is no cold. This isn't the sniffles. Um, if you start feeling sick, start taking your vitamins. Every morning, 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C. I was taking double doses of zinc, double doses of vitamin D. Red going back and forth between Tylenol and Motrin every four to six hours to help with the, uh, with the fever. And there's really not much more you can do. Uh, if you're eligible to go get the Regeneron monoclonal antibodies, do some research. Cora and, and I both got them. They're safe. They're cloned white blood cells designed to go out and attack COVID. And boy, did it save my rear end. Uh, I, I gave it everything I could. I stayed hydrated. And please stay hydrated. Um, I know everybody wants to get Gatorade and whatever. Drink water. Sincerely. If you want to mix it up and have a Gatorade... Every once in a while, if you're blessed to still have taste, drink you a Gatorade. I don't care. Drink water. Keep drinking water. And you're not going to believe how thirsty you're going to be. Um, keep drinking water. You need it. If you get dehydrated, you're in for a hell of a ride. Drink water. Um, you start getting a nagging headache or you start to feel ill. If you're not already taking vitamins to boost yourself to protect yourself from what might come at you anyway because it's everywhere um start you get a headache you start getting body aches take some take your vitamins and start drinking water your body needs every bit of help that it can get it is absolutely no joke uh going back to my apologies for those of you who lost folks my sincere regrets a lot of you know I'm an ornery, antagonistic prick, and I don't mean to be that. I'm a loving, caring person. I would give my kidney, I would give half my liver, I'd give a lung if it meant I could save any one of you people, or a stranger for that matter. Uh, two years ago, there was a little boy in Ohio who I was a match for, and uh, I was number four on the waiting list to give him one of my kidneys. I didn't know him, but I knew he deserved to live, and we all do. Um, sorry for this background noise, it's the best I can do. But uh, I still want you to go out and live your life. And that's going to bring me to the second thing, and it's going to be a little bit of change of a tune here. The COVID-19 vaccine 
after sitting with one of the nation's number one immunologists who used to work for Dr. Fauci, who is a leader and a super well-respected person, Dr. Kevin Rosenbach, and he's my best buddy. He's a beautiful human being. He's a compassionate, loving doctor. He's an amazing person. And I got to sit down and really have a long talk with him about the vaccines. And, and folks, listen, this isn't political. This is not, uh, I'm not the doctor, but this, this Friday, hopefully, I'm gonna have a radio show and I'm gonna take as much time as the doctor will give me. And I want you guys to tune into my Facebook. I want you to tune into my radio show. It's been off the air because I've been sick and some other things, but this Friday, I wanna, I wanna sit down with Kevin Rosenbach. He's an amazing, amazing physician. And I want him to tell you in more doctor detail what I'm gonna tell you right now. Vaccines are vaccines. Our mythology of vaccines is the, it's like a Nintendo for you folks out there. The vaccine, the delivery method itself has been around for years, years. The delivery methods have been around for years. What they choose to load into the vaccine, the antibodies, the, the virus itself surrounded in fat lipids or mRNA, whatever it may be, uh, the delivery methods have been around for years. I was one of the ignorant people that sat around and said, this COVID vaccine's too new. They can't possibly know how to defend it. Well, listen, um, I'm here to tell you that I was wrong and I probably posted 500 things on social media just because of a political antagonistic agenda and that's wrong. And I'm telling you I was wrong. I don't have the vaccine, so this isn't because I'm vaccinated, but I sat down with one of the smartest human beings I've ever met in my life. And listen, vaccines are, are the same. What they loaded up with to fight the disease or whatever, flu vaccines. We get flu vaccines and, and pneumococcal vaccines every year. Some people do, some people don't. I've gotten them sparsely throughout my adult life. Flu vaccines aren't designed for you not to get the flu. They're, they're there to help you. If you have an, a, a great immune response to that vaccine, yeah, it's going to stop the flu. You're probably not, you're gonna get it in you, but your body's gonna be so well prepared because you have that antibody response from the vaccine. You'll never know that you had it. It'll come in and it'll be gone. But for some of us who don't have that antibody response to those vaccines, you're still gonna get the flu, but you're probably not gonna die from it. You might, but the numbers are drastically lowered. Your symptoms are drastically lowered. The, the pain and the suffering is drastically lowered. And that's the same thing for the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, the monoclonal injections work a little bit different and I know what it did for me Oh, goodness. But the vaccine isn't this new experimental thing. Uh, it's COVID-19. They put it into sequences. They put it into fat isotopes, whatever it is. I don't know all the super technology here. Don't super quote me. You can hear it from the horse's mouth when I go live this Friday with Dr. Kevin Rosenbach. Hopefully, uh, no disasters uh, as long as schedules maintain, I want you guys to hear it from a legitimate, real, non-politicized, uh, he is not a political person. Um, he may lean one way or the other for certain deals, but this is not a political person. This is a caring, oath-abiding, amazing physician. I want you guys to listen to him this Friday. Uh, going to be around uh, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to sit down and have a heart-to-heart. -heart. I'm going to give you guys the ability to text questions in regardless of what they are. He'll answer them. And, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm not calling you conspiracy theorists. I'm not calling you they're trying to change our DNAs and they're trying to uh, get that vaccine, folks. Uh it can it can help 
it could help you. It might not stop the transmission of the disease. It might not stop you from getting sick. But if it stops you from going through one day of what I went through, uh, it's worth it. It's, it's absolutely worth it. Um, if you have underlying health issues, of course, consult your physician. Cora had Kawasaki's disease when she was a kid, as did I. I'm sure my dad's sitting here laughing. But one of the things that happens with Kawasaki's disease is it leaves you with a high rheumatoid factor. It can, can affect your renal system, cause jaundice, it can act, and it can give you aneurysms. And Cora, unfortunately, uh, developed an aneurysm on her heart. And when you get uh, your body temperature acutely raising, it can affect an aneurysm, they can explode. And so even when Cora got her HPV Gardasil vaccine, you know, it was a big decision for me. Um, there was also some other things with that Gardasil vaccine. People were dying. And I guess you'll have those things. So it was a big deal for me to get my daughter vaccinated with that. And I monitored her temperature every 30 minutes for the next three or four days. Just to make sure she was okay. Like anything that gets put in your body, you want to monitor yourself. Um, make sure it's right for you. Um, I would say on a 99 or 90, at least a 95% level, it's got to be right for you. Uh, protect yourself. Uh, I've, I've changed my tune, not just because I got sick. I sat down and I spoke to an immunologist. I, I sat down and legitimately talked to one of the best in the country not because he's my friend because he's one of the best and uh i pray for all of you folks out there i hope it doesn't affect your families or your friends i hope that you stay safe i hope this message reaches some of the people that i may have offended chipmunk please know please know that was not I was not trying to be, and I know I did, ended up, ended up doing it. I'm for, I'm sorry. I very sincerely sorry. I love you, Marissa. Um, there's people out there that got loved ones on ventilators, and I, I hope that your family members pull through. I hope your kids stay safe. Get the vaccine. Wear a mask if you feel safe. We all know they're not 100% effective. We get it. It's going to, some things are going to leak through. No, no duh. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. I urge you to do whatever you need to do to feel better, to feel safer. Um, if you're coughing, if you're sick, stay home. Do not send your kids to school. Learn how to quarantine. Be respectful of people. Try to mitigate this. We're a huge village of people. It's 300 and some million of us, but... We got to try to mitigate it. Whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, whether you don't give a crap about public politics, this is a nasty virus. It's killing people. It's destroying businesses. It's destroying lives. It's just, you know, it's, re it's legitimate. Uh, I learned the hard way, <laughs> much like a lot of things in my life. Uh, but I'm a humbled person, and I'm just trying to be as absolutely, completely sincere. If you spent this last 30 minutes with me, all the respect and thank you for your time. I tried to keep it uh, straight to the facts. Like I said, I didn't. This isn't political, everybody. Stay safe out there. Uh, take care of each other. Stop all this hate and stuff. If you get sick, take water. Take water. Count to 10 and take more water. You need it. You need it. Stay hydrated, my friends. And I'm not talking Dos Equis. Drink your water. Uh, all the prayers out there to everybody. Stay safe. Have a good, have a good fall. Um, Best wishes to everybody. Thank you for your time.